Yeah, that's Tony with it. Yeah. Yeah. Wants to make a big surprise. Well, it's cool in the town. I mean, it's just you and me here. Plus, they don't really see me as one of them. When I get up there, I'm pulling you up with me, okay? Dude, my name. See, that time's up. But hey, remember, it's not about me. It's your time to shine, baby. Congratulations. Next in line for the corner office? Uh, I'm talking about interviews, revamping, but no major details. Oh, okay. Good. I mean, I busted my ass for this company. Been too long doing, doing two and three people's jobs. I think I deserve it. I look forward to that promotion. Hey, what's up, bro? Oh, I thought that was you. Hi, man. Man, you get like a million bucks. <laughs> How you doing? Same shit, different day. The girls have been friendlier, huh? Is that all you think about, bro? <laughs> kind of. I mean, yeah. No. Okay, go for it, hey. Since we've had a black president, these black people have been acting out. I mean, black supremacy is at an all time high. And if you don't, I mean, what kind of president is that? I mean, I haven't noticed anything. I actually think he's doing a great job. I mean, look, jobs are up, right? I mean, Alton, you're not white, you understand? Not really, bro. I think it's all in your head, bro. You always say that, I don't see it. I mean, I believe you, but I think you may be a little sensitive. There is no racism. That shit died with the civil rights movement, bro. Okay, really? Make America melanated again? Come on. When was America melanated? When white people were slaves, really? We want to go back to that? That's your presidential slogan? And it works? Oh man, yeah, I mean, all these country guys and brown necks, you know, they're, they're talking about, about heritage and, and not hate. And they're acting all tough because they know if the cops show up, it's going to be me that gets arrested, right? Or they can just put a bullet in me and get away with self defense, whether it was or not. And you know the jury don't let them off. You know the judge will. Sounds like you are playing race card, bro. This is the best the country has been in a long time. And now, Euro American people are getting all these special handouts now, grants for white owned businesses. Shoot, I wish I could receive government assistance, but I can't because I am black. I am still paying for college because I am black. I couldn't get a full scholarship to the school of my choice. I couldn't even get a partial scholarship. And then they are like, your parents make too much money, so I couldn't even get a student loan because I didn't fit in the minority or white demographic. Okay, but that had nothing to do with your colors, everything to do with the fact that your parents made too much money to be granted funding. I mean, it is an affordable thing. We were poor. My grandfather only left us 25 acres when he died and a little house in the Hamptons, and my dad had it worth from the bottom up to get where he is today. Okay, but didn't your father Worked for his father his whole career, and then he passed it to your grandfather when he passed. That's not the point, bro. My dad had to work hard for everything. He didn't get handed. You know, I want you both to know that Jewish lives matter too. Shut up, uh, Bobby. Shut up. It's always that. It's always shut up, Bobby. This, shut up, Bobby. That. No one cares about the Israeli people. You know what? I want you both to know that you're racist. Oh. Okay, I don't know, man. It's called generational wealth for a reason. Excuse me, folks. The meeting moves up to 9.30. You've got five minutes to get to Gordon Avalanche. Thank you, Cindy. Hello, and thank you all for being here on such short notice. I have an important meeting across town in an hour, but I'd like to say that the numbers look really good this month, and you're all doing a fantastic job. I would like to encourage you all to keep working very hard, and perhaps your bonuses this year will look better than last year's. So as you know, we've been looking for a new VP of Finance for about two months now, and I'm very excited about the new director. 
But before I get into that, I'd like to give a few acknowledgements. Cindy has brought in one of the biggest contracts this year and continues to lead the crew with closing. Thank you, Cindy. <laughs> Rachel has been working very hard, and she's very close to closing the deal with the distributors for the South American market. Great job, Rachel. <laughs> and Brandon. I don't know what we would have done without you, buddy, these past couple of months. Picking up the slap where Lance fell short. We really been, would have been up a creek without a paddle if not for you. Thank you so much. Can you pass these down? Thank you. So, as you will see, we'll be making some changes, moving some of you around where we feel is necessary for the company. Some of you will stay where you are because that's where we need you. So, without further ado, um, I would like to um, introduce you to the new VP of Finance. We've thought long and hard on this, and we really think that we selected the right person for the job. So, here he is, the new VP of Finance, Alton. Hello, everyone. Thank you for such a warm welcome. I am looking forward to getting to know every one of you and working together as a team. I am a team player, and there is no I in team. It's going to be a fun quarter.
Police are calling it a mystery and plan to get to the bottom of this soon. Police say Mitchell entered the home to two very aggressive residents who first fired at the teen before he pulled out his pistol and shot them both in the chest, leaving them for dead. It is unclear if it'll be ruled a homicide or self-defense, standing your ground, which is the law in Florida, or if he could be charged with murder and serving upwards of 20 years in federal prison. Many neighbors who know the boy says he's a good kid and maybe a bit rough around the edges, but nothing but a pure gentleman. He's known around his high school as a peacemaker, football and basketball star, and he volunteers for youth groups on the weekends to help young at-risk children stay out of trouble. We have more to see with Eric Jackson. Take a look, Eric. Hello everyone, this is Eric Jackson reporting live. I do have Danica here. Please share your story, ma'am. Uh, okay, so, oh, okay. Well, you know, I gotta be careful out here. We are in a pandemic, okay? And I'm in disguise, because I gotta be careful out here in these streets, you know, because um, nobody recognize me and think I'm snitching. So, what had happened, right? I was in my room, I was getting ready to film a TikTok video, me and my baby daddy. So then I heard, pop, and I was like, oh snap, it's popping off in the streets, okay? It's popping in the hood. So I went to the corner of the window, okay? Because I ain't trying to get shot. Everybody know that I'm, I'm both legged and paratone, so I can't run that fast, so I got to be careful, okay? So I'm peeking out the corner of the window. I saw Patreon. That boy was running. He was running for his life. Somebody must have really irked at that boy because, boy, he was, he was getting it. He was getting it. So I grabbed my cell phone. I ain't stupid. I started filming. Because, see, I'm sending a video to World Style Hip Hop. You heard of them? Because, see, what happened? They do, do you know they pay you? Especially if the video good, they pay you. And everybody knows that equal is about her coins, okay? So, anyway, we all went outside out there. And I saw Mariah Mama, Miss Erica. She was like, y'all, leave that baby alone. Leave that baby alone. So, I knew it was going down. It was a shooting and stuff. So, then, here come the popo rolling up on me, coming for me, talking about what happened? Asking me all these questions, all right? I don't know nothing. Because everybody know in the hood that snitches get stitches, okay? I ain't even with that, though, all right? Mm-hmm. All right, well, you heard her. Hey, in the studio. Snitches get stitches. Hey, Ricardo, okay. Sean Equal, I'm a thank fan. You, all right, I'm thank a fan. you, Hello, everyone. This is Eric Jackson, reported live. Now, I am here with Calico, who did see everything. Now... Calico, do you, do, you, do you share the witness, please? I could have won that rude boy. A pure bumble class in you. May I drive for my car, you know? I may I talk to my girl if I'm fierce. Um, I may talk to my girl if I'm the fool, see? And may I pop. They say, yo. Next thing you know, may I pop, pop. I say, yo, back, I call you back. So make it off the phone with her. Call up the pop for them. I call them and I say, yo. Something going on. If I get down here quick, you yeah? So them come down here and think. I say, yo, that boy, man, a good boy, man, him up on TV, him a volunteer for charity and all them things there. That good boy, so me don't know what I'm trying to make this man out to be some kind of criminal, you know? All, all right, right, well, thank you, Calico. This is uh, Eric Jackson, hey, yo, Live. Hey, yo, rock thank to you, you know, you hear me rock? No, no, now, thank you hey, so much. Me. All right, back to you, Yeah, big a good boy. Yeah, man, rock the man. See, see there. Thank you, Eric. Maybe it's a time here. And police are investigating to get down to the bottom of this matter. However, it has recently been brought to our attention and rumors confirmed. Karen and Kevin were having trouble. Mr. Hartley has been named an abuser, has had several parking violations, and even a DUI this year. It has also been said that Ms. Hartley has had extra marital affairs. Could this be a love triangle gone wrong? Channel Via, you will be following up with this story. We'll be building for the outcome.
Society. 21 year old white male, Dylan Parker, the young thug who showed up to an anti abortion rally last May and injured over 30 people with an AR 15 hub gun. Police say this is definitely an act of terrorism, and when proven guilty, he will never see the light of day again. When will they start acting like human beings and contributing citizens? When will these people learn? Senator Athena Davis has said, and I quote, this type of person is a threat to himself and furthermore, our society. There's no room for this type of behavior, and this thug terrorist should get the death penalty. Many people have tried to get an agreement following Senator Davis' comments. Yes, and many have noticed this trend of violence amongst white males in the past years and have decided to revisit the punishable laws for these crimes, making them more severe and more harsh. Many have even considered bringing back the public hanging as capital punishment. No matter what they decided, these kinds of heinous crimes must be punishable to the maximum level, and these thugs must be stopped in their tracks by any means necessary. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Yes, indeed. Anytime we need to clear the air, we're here for you. 
Why, thank you, Ricardo. Thank you. Well, you know, oh, I really oh, don't. Oh, 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 we have way we do things around here. Sheldon. <laughs> well, I apologize, but you know, I was just. As I was explaining, Miss Wilson has come under fire following some of her recent comments that surfaced in a Blue Lives Matter podcast. <clears throat>
only half white? What about his other people? Hmm? Look, all I'm saying is if white people can come together and decide not to patronize their business, well, that's different. If you exclude a certain race of people and they decide to boycott, well, that's fair game. But we all know that would never happen. White people are too broken and talk to hate each other so much that they may never be able to come together and work as a unit. Let me tell you, a white dollar in America is so powerful, if they withdrew their money and limit shopping to just their community, you know, like, white-owned businesses, they can shut this whole place down. We all need their knowledge to circulate this country, <laughs> including us. But we all know that will also never happen. So, back to you, Mrs. Wilson. Another one of our viewers says that Mildred Wilson is just a filthy rich Negro, and she has no regards for people that don't look like her. She's the epitome of black supremacy. What would you say to that? <sighs> That's ridiculous. I mean, what can I say? I'm nice to them when I see them. I mean, hey, my cousin married a white man from Cuba. Hmm, how can I be racist? I mean, you can't get any whiter than that. I mean, he's white. Yeah, but let's say focus on you. Do you have any white friends? Yes, Shaniqua, I sure do. Mm -hmm. That you invite to your house. That you eat chicken with. Well, well, I. I, I would, but they don't let me. I mean, I, I try. I, I promise I'm not racist. I mean, I, I would invite any white person, okay, mm -hmm. any Asian or Latino person or Indian to be my friend, okay? Especially mm, those Euro-American men. They're so nice and beefy and strong. Miss <laughs> Wilson, uh, you have a lot of white people working for you, right? Yes, Ricardo, if you must know, I have five white people, three Latinos, and one half Asian. Don't understand your point. It's not even ten people. How many employees do you have? If you must know, Shaniqua, I have about 250. Don't understand your point. <laughs> well, Miss Wilson, we have known you for many years, and we have never ever known you to do this much hate towards anyone. In fact, I remember when you held that poor little snot nosed white boy's hand at the opening of the Miami Black Kids game back in 2018? Yes, yes, and you gave his mother that $100 public gift card. I don't know it. Forget the fact you brought an entire camera crew to get it on the video. It was your heart that mattered. If that's not a pure sign of love for all people, I don't know what it is. That's exactly what I've been trying to tell you to. But you won't allow me to speak on this forum. I have not been allowed to say anything. How can a woman who helps a white person be racist? Hmm? After all I have done for the white community, how can I be back? Listen, you two. Just the other day, in my hotel, mm -hmm, I allowed an upgrade for a white family with two children? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would a racist do that? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Everybody who knows Mildred Wilson knows that I love this country and I love white people. Yes. <laughs> well, that wraps it up here for today, folks. Uh, Ms. Wilson, thanks for stopping by. It was a real pleasure. Um, maybe one day you'll stop back and let us know how this all turned out for you. Yes, I know. I can want to love to find out. That wraps up the news for today. Check back at 7 p.m. with my friend and colleague, Tevin Hammond, as he covers the world in Negro sports. Thank you, Shaniqua Monroe. Ricardo Wilkins, Channel BFD.
Am I too harsh? 
Wait, what? Ah, uh, wow. Sure. You want me to be the perfect white stereotype? I mean, honestly, I'm as white as it get. And I'm from North Florida. Okay, I know what people, they wouldn't say half of these things. Okay, that's not the point that I'm trying to make. We need you to act. You are an actress. We need you to act more white. But you want me to be the perfect white stereotype? Seriously, who wrote these lines anyway? It sounds like Kelly Clarkson on crack and like Jennifer Anderson and Friends. Okay. You're taking this way too personally, Cassie. I actually have white friends. Mm -hmm. My maid is white. And her family is like my family. I even went over to script with them and they loved it. You're taking this way too far when we're just trying to have some fun and make the show entertaining at the same time. Listen. No, I'm listening. White face was depicted nearly 100 years ago, and it still continues to feel like white people today. We are not all the same. We do not all say the same things. We are not all rich, spoiled little brats. We have more dimensions to our personality as well. Why is it I always have to talk with this high pitch and when voices like I'm just ditzy? I don't know how your history applies here, Cassie, but it's either you want the job or you don't. Okay? We're not changing anything. We have modified this script several times, and we know what works best for network television. You're forgetting that we're the experienced ones here. So it's either we can work together, or we find somebody else. That's your choice. Listen, I respect that, and you, and the entire crew of writers, but please keep in mind what I'm saying here. Again, white face was depicted nearly 100 years ago, and it still continues to evolve and play white people today in 2022. Maybe we don't paint our faces anymore. We are still required to play the same stereotypical characters. Lazy, thieves, liars, cowards, and promiscuous women. None of that was true, never was, still isn't, and yet it is used as the main personality of 90% of white actors and actresses. Why is that? Okay, again, it's either we can work together or we find somebody else. Pick a choice, pick a pill, red or blue. I can do it, okay? Stop, 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 please. Okay, Makeup! Makeup! What the hell was that? What's wrong with her? I don't know why it always comes down to race with these people. It's like they always want to pull the race card. You know what? This whole white lives better thing, girl, all these people riled up. They need to calm down. I mean, we had a white president, for God's sakes. What more do they want? A white woman vice president? Come on. I hope your love don't 
don't suffocate Cause I fall hard when I fall in love I wanna be the one you're thinking of Once in the morning before you go to work And in the afternoon, no time to flirt We share our love and our businesses No social media, no witnesses uh -huh. Look, I do not. You see, look, it's like this. 
So many people are so angry with their own lives, and, and they come from such toxic environments that they never escape their hate. They never get away from it. I understand. I guess you're right. As long as none of us dates outside of our race, then it doesn't matter. I, I, I'm not saying that either. What I am saying is this. I just don't have the effort or the fortitude to fight battles that I, I care nothing about. I, you know, look, I don't see how these race wars really benefit anybody anyway. Look, let me tell you something. I have met some mighty dumb white folks and then I have met some mighty amazing brown-skinned men. You know, you know, the thing is, all they want to do is keep us divided. As long as they can keep us divided, that's all that matters to the, the, the big corporations or the millionaire boy scouts. Listen, darling, if they couldn't divide us by the color of our skin, they'd divide us by the color of our eyes, or maybe the size of our bodies, or well, maybe even the texture of our hair. Well, not mine, but yours. You know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I... So you don't hate black people? God, no. Don't. For what? And let that deteriorate my practice and my overall health? Darling, I don't have that kind of energy to, to expect. Hey, I hate Joe Biden. I hate Donald Trump. I hate Hillary Clinton. Shit. I hate Obama, but I'm not going to make him a spokesperson for an entire race of people. So, have you ever dated a black woman? Yeah, I dated a few. Yes, yes, yes. We had our different views on a lot of things, but they were good women. They came from great families, and their families treated me like family. Wait, when? Before mama or after mama? College. And after college. Why didn't you marry any of them? Oh, darling, your grandma. She was always worried about what you say about her and what the rest of the family was going to think about her. She'd always be saying stuff like, think about what you're doing with that girl. And think about when you'd be putting that child from being brought up biracial. You know, I, I gotta tell you, I, I never thought it bothered me, but. I somehow subconsciously sabotage those relationships because of it. Yeah. Wow. I have no idea. But Mama was your true love, right? Oh, darling. I love your mama. But your mama and I got married for the wrong reasons. We did what our parents wanted us to do. We did it without even realizing we were doing it. And you know, because <laughs> you know, it was a rushed marriage because your mama got pregnant with you. Mighty damn quick. You know, speaking of marriage, you know what? That's one of the most important things you ever want to do in your life. And you know what? When you finally make that decision, it should be made by you, from your heart, and not by other people's limitations on themselves. Oh, God. Here come the boys with blue. Oh, shit. Does anybody come out here? There isn't any problem here. We were just minding our own business, and this lady started harassing us. Yeah, I, I, I told you. It, it was me. I'm the one. These people are breaking the law. They are in a no charcoal zone, and they're barbecuing. I want them arrested and thrown underneath the cell. Um, ma'am, please come back. Okay. Oh, okay. If okay. you have any comment, what happened? I already.
grill it over there. Not here. I guess that I, I wasn't aware of that. I was here this last month with my wife and kids, and we had a little barbecue right over there. My wife said nothing to me. So, so listen, are you going to arrest them for, for, for barbecuing? Arrest them? Ma'am, I don't, I'm not quite sure what the charge would be. I mean, there are 200 yards from any electrical component, 100 yards off the main road. I don't see any littering happening. I'm not, you know, give, give, give me a second. Let me, let me call it. Breaker, breaker. Premise? 534? Yeah, yeah. I have an incident here. Or if you don't buy a I just want to know uh, what the rules are here for doing in a large form. Yeah, right there for them, please. You sure do? I appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. Yeah. Officer, good afternoon. Uh, hey, how you I, 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 I'm fine. We were doing just fine until Bob Crucia here came along and started trying to make a lot of trouble with the cops. My, my, my dad died five years ago, and this was his favorite part. So what we do is every year on this day, we come here to congregate in remembrance of him, and right here. Every year. That's a really nice question you got there. I'm sorry about your dad. So that's a pretty cool thing to do that. I appreciate that, but I want to. This happened really a little bit because we never had a problem here before. You know, that's in my knowledge, but listen, I'm still a movie. I've been on the force for a year. So I don't know everything. I mean, listen, probably, at most, a warning, a ticket, nobody's going to jail. We're not going to escalate this. Don't worry about it. Right. So, you know, I just made a call. She'll get back to me. She'll let me know what's going on. I understand. Trust me, I understand. That's a tough job you've got there. And officer, I understand. It's still a business. I mean, there are people to answer to. There's a lot of dollars allocated to the police department. I, I, I understand. I realize if you don't turn up enough crime, there could be budget cuts. I get it. I totally get it. My daddy, he was a cop up in Jacksonville before we uh, relocated down in South Florida. Really? Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, though, you are right. It is a business, you know. Uh, yeah. And uh, now that she got us involved, you know, I mean, I, I want to take us back to the station. You know, uh, may have mentioned before, like uh, I need some kind of report. You understand? Uh, so, I, um, but I, I understand, that, you know. And I got to tell you, officer, I got to say to you, you know, it's a crime. It's sad with all the police police brutality against white folks. You know, those officers. Those officers make all the cops look bad. Every one of them. Yeah, yeah, I mean, look at me, man. I'm an officer of the law. You know? And I'm going to do the right thing. Despite the fact <laughs> my buddy Rodriguez, he reported another guy for abusive and foul behavior. <laughs> and, uh, well, let me give this. They fired my buddy, my colleague Rodriguez, they fired him. They put the other cop on every day leave. My boy's been getting death threats. He's thinking about the officers. Can you imagine that? Oh, man. You know, I, you know, I, I, I gotta tell you, I know, I always believe that not all cops are bad, but officer, I wonder sometimes, how come we never hear about the good ones? Or are there really any good ones out there? I mean, Listen, man, it's, it's the media. It's the media. I'm gonna tell you. Okay, they're owned by the five same people. Yeah. When they need to divide, if they got something going on, you know, they just send it out to the media, the media trickles down to the journalist, and journalists are just doing their job. You can't really play, you can't shoot the rest of you. You understand? So, this is how they create that division between their viewers, you know, and put fear in their hearts. You know, it's true, you know, I, I work the channel CBD News, and you know, I have yet to come across a story that I can feel good about sharing. You know, it's all so scripted. And, and so targeted, that, that's the reason why you can tune into five different channels at the same time, and it all seems like they're conversing with each other <laughs> verbatim. Yes, I know. Oh, we'll see. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, plan is five, three, four. Uh-huh. Gotcha. Copy. That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Copy. Have a great day now. Ma'am, excuse me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
I just heard word back that uh, there's nothing in the manual that states that, and um, I don't think you have the right or the authority to call the police out here for something so simple. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, but I wanted to get over your name in a second. I'm going to give a little report. Wait a minute. You've got to be kidding me. Whose side are you on? Mm -hmm. I mean, you're going to let these white people have fun and enjoy themselves while are distraught and pay some possible divorce? I am miserable. And you let these white people getting all down and having a good time. Listen, they are a hazard to the city as well as the country, and I am afraid for my life right now. We got, we got, we got to do something about this. We got to put these people in their place. They should have stayed in slavery. They are. Look at me. They are my back. Young man, I'm sorry, this is despicable. You don't speak for me, okay? I'm an officer of the law. I'm going to uphold the law. Not for my benefit or for people that look like me, okay? I'm an officer. Listen, are you kidding me? Really? Well, I want you to remember when this city goes to shit, I want you to remember this.